As you know, I am not a lawyer. I can't even say that I have played one on the screen. <laughs> so, why am I here? <laughs> why have I been asked to deliver the keynote speech to you on this pivotal day of in your lives as you dive headfirst into a presumably bright but unpredictable future? Well, maybe the reason I'm here is because I happen to have some experience leaping off high perches into scary voids. So do allow me to offer some simple pointers that I've picked up along the way in my career full of leaps and dives. How to survive the fall in three easy steps by Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> the first one is pretty obvious, but not always easy. Stay loose. My journey from Malaysia, Ipoh Malaysia, to the Academy Awards stage began with my first love, which was not acting, but dance. I knew at a very young age that my gift was to communicate through movement. In my studies, I found freedom in discipline and focus. I trained tirelessly day and night, drilling my body in every aspect of the craft. More importantly, I trained my mind to be still, to silence the whispers of self-doubt. Dance was my safe place, my inevitable future, and my undeniable path. So I enrolled in a ballet school in England and began living my dream. Unfortunately, life had other plans. I suffered a spinal injury and just like that, I watched everything vanish into thin air. Life as I knew it was over. With my dreams of dance crushed, I credit the principal of my school for giving me the encouragement that ultimately led me to a career beyond my imagination. It was she who encouraged me to stay loose about my future. When falling, the tendency is to tighten up to brace for impact. But in truth, the safest thing one can do is remain calm, even curious about the shifting world around you. After graduating with a degree in creative arts, I returned home more open to other possibilities outside the box. With this awareness came the freedom to make choices I might not have otherwise been able to. This opened the door to doing a commercial in Hong Kong, then to acting roles and the start of my life in film. Which leads me to my second piece of advice. Hmm. Know your limits. Although understanding what you can do is essential, understanding what you can't do is pretty important too. This works on two levels, both internally and externally. Internally, knowing your limits keep you humble, motivated, and focused on a goal to point your finger toward. Externally, Knowing the limits that are set for you by others give you a place to point a different finger. I am talking about the middle one. In other words, limitations set by yourself give you boundaries to respect, but limitations set by others give you boundaries to bust through. As a young woman trying to break into a film in Hong Kong, I was confronted with limitations at every turn. Initially cast in stereotypical roles, the demure, docile, damsel in distress, I soon realized that what I wanted to play were the action roles, the heroes. Of course, these were then reserved exclusively for men but I could see that their fight sequences were highly choreographed and I knew in my bones that my dance training would allow me to excel at them if only I were given the chance. So I went to my producer and said, I did say please, I want an action role. I was prepared to do everything the men were doing, the choreography, the stunts, taking the blows, the wire work, all of it. What, like it's hard? 
But when the chance finally came, I knew it was make or break. I had that one shot to prove my bankability as an action star, and if I failed, I would not get that opportunity again. So I seized the moment with everything I had, and as it turned out, thankfully, audiences were more than ready for a female star in action comedies. The film Yes, Madam was well received and launched my career. I knew I had it made it then when I soon after I joined Jet Li and Jackie Chan as the three people who Hong Kong insurers refused to cover. <laughs> They took one look at the scenes we were shooting and ran for the hills. I wore that as a badge of honor. Eventually, things progressed, and before I knew it, I was regularly running on rooftops, riding motorcycles onto moving trains, and rolling off vans onto oncoming traffic. Don't try that at home, okay? There were injuries, as you can imagine, but with every nick and scratch and bruise and fractured vertebrae, I came back better and braver. Learning how to fall teaches you how to land, and learning to land. Gives you the courage to jump higher. So when the James Bond producers knocked on my door about a film called Tomorrow Never Dies, I thought, yes, they want me to play James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate that the producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson had a substantial role in mine in the character of Wei Lin. A formidable agent who was always one step off her adversaries and equal to Bond. Many regard that character as instrumental in modernizing the franchise and its retrograde portrayals of women. Although Bond offers came in after the Bond movie, I waited two years for the proper role, rejecting scripts that lacked nuance or depth in their character. Honestly. There were times I had doubts as to whether I was doing the right thing in waiting. After all, actors want to act. However, I knew I would not be happy unless I continued to seek out roles that allowed me and like-minded creatives to dig deeper and reflect three-dimensional humanity on stage. And that was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So I must have done something right because I am busier than ever. These examples illustrate the importance of limitations because our limitations become our challenges, and there is nothing like a challenge to keep you working, striving, and pushing for more. Every demeaning role I was offered, every rejection I was handed, and every time someone underestimated me, I found energy and renewed motivation. This brings me to the third and final tip.